Now to an MSNBC exclusive. New documents detail more than a dozen conflicts of interest Postmaster General Louis DeJoy faced over investments in companies with ties to the U.S. Postal Service. Now these internal documents were obtained under court order by the government watchdog group Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington, also known as CRU. Now here's one example. In August 2020, J.P. Morgan Chase said it held talks with the Postal Service several months before about installing ATMs in post offices. At the time of those talks, DeJoy's financial interests in J.P. Morgan Chase was more than $15,000. They also show that DeJoy had conflicts of interest relating to the company where he served as a chief executive, XPO Logistics, a company that later received a $120 million contract from the Postal Service. The U.S. Postal Service maintains DeJoy acted in compliance with ethics re regulations, saying in a statement, quote, when and how he divested reflects the process he was instructed to follow by the Postal Service Ethics Office in compliance with federal ethics regulations. All right, joining us now is Noah Bookbinder. He's the executive director of Citizens of Responsibility and Ethics, also known as CREW. And, and you contend that the Postal Service mishandled uh, his conflicts of interest from the start. Why? Well, it's, it's clear that both DeJoy and the Postal Service really dropped the ball here. Um, this was the head of the Postal Service who had millions in interests in the company that he used to work at that uh, everybody at the Postal Service knew he used to work at that had multiple valuable contracts with the Postal Service. And so you know, whether or not he was in the room when decisions were made about that company uh, and, and the, you know, what the Postal Service was going to have him do was, was recuse, was essentially walk out of the room, have somebody else handle it. Uh, everybody knew what his interests were, and we have every reason to think that those interests could have played a role in decisions that were made. And decisions may have been being made to help Louis DeJoy financially rather than do what was best for the American people. Uh, that's, that's not acceptable. Um, and you also had you know, the head of the Postal Service, which affects every American, uh, holding all of these financial interests uh, in companies that had, had business before the Postal Service rather than doing what he should have done and just gotten rid of those. Uh, it really put the public interest at risk. And Crew also contends that the refusal by the Postal Service to release these documents, the documents we showed at the start of this segment, before the court had to get involved, that that suggests that they were trying to hide how badly they mismanaged uh, DeJoy's De conflicts. Unpack that for me. Sure. I mean, these are pretty standard documents that usually uh, we or others can obtain from, from federal agencies that show what steps were taken to avoid conflicts of interest. Rather than just turning them over, the Postal Service said, no, these were uh, deliberative documents that helped them make their decisions. They weren't final, uh, so they couldn't turn them over. Uh, that doesn't seem to be true based on what we can see in, in these documents, uh, or at least it's, it's highly questionable. And it really suggests that um, they may be trying to hide what happened mm. because they understand that DeJoy and the Postal Service didn't do what they had to do to protect the American people. And I should say, uh, Crew shared these documents with me uh, yesterday, and my colleague Phil McCausland and I wrote a story that's now on the NBCNews.com website. Every time I do reporting about the Postal Service, one of the questions I get is that DeJoy's tenure has been controversial from the start. The Biden administration has said they don't want him in that position, and yet in that position he remains. In the minute we have left, help us understand why. Well, the president actually can't fire a postmaster general. That is up to uh, the Postal Service's Board of Governors. President Biden did appoint new members, uh, but there are still a majority of, of members of that board who were appointed by uh, President Trump. And uh, at the moment, they don't seem to want to take action. At this point, the conflicts and scandals around DeJoy are so great that it's really past time that they do something about it, and there needs to be public pressure on them. Noah Bookbinder, thanks so much for your time and uh, your willingness to join us today.